Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm going to be taking a look at something a little bit different and I have to say I am totally excited about this here. This is something I saw on Facebook and I thought was pretty damn awesome. This is Joy Toy's line of mecha figures which are called Dark Source and this right here is the Jewel Blade Swordsman or it's also known as the HZ Double Knife. These are some seriously awesome looking not Titanfall mecha and honestly I thought I wouldn't be able to get my hands on one because they are a little bit hard to get outside of Asia especially if you're in Europe. So first off I have to say thank you to the sponsor of this video which is Yaobai the Chinese proxy site. Some Chinese figure manufacturers are pumping out some awesome stuff lately and a great place to find some is over on Taobao.com which essentially is kind of like Chinese Amazon. It's much bigger than some places like AliExpress so there is a good chance of snagging some decent deals on there. I will mention that Taobao is completely in Chinese and Yaobai's website can be confusing at times. So here's a little bit of a primer. Basically, once you're on the Yaobao homepage, hit Taobao, or however you say that, paste in Dark Source. I'll put that Chinese down there in the description box so you can copy paste that. Grab the URL of the figure that you want, pop it in here back on the Yaobai homepage, scroll down, add to cart, and there you go, epic Chinese figure in the bag. But anyway, let's get right into the review. So first up, there is an overview of absolutely everything that comes in the box, and this box is full to the brim. As for the box itself, it is pretty simple. It's just a standard corrugated cardboard box with a print on it. Inside, we've just got some plastic holding everything in place. And once again, there is everything you do get in the box once you get that unboxed. So not only do you get this awesome mecha, you get a little three inch pilot figure as well. So that is pretty damn awesome. This box is absolutely jam packed with tons of accessories, but I will take a look at them a little later on. For now, let's take a look at the mecha. So there is what the double knife looks like just taken out of the box. The only thing you really have to do is add this butt piece on. But besides that, this is exactly what it looks like and it looks astounding. The first thing that I noticed straight away though after taking this out, it was a little bit on the sticky side. A little bit weird, but I realized that it's obviously the wash that they used on this to weather it. Somewhat similar to something you'd do if you're painting miniatures. Some of those washes can feel a little bit sticky at first, but that feeling goes away pretty quickly. The design and detailing on this thing is spectacular and a lot better in person than I actually thought it would be. The paint applications are absolutely perfect, the weathering looks great, and all in all this is one of the coolest mecha figures I've actually seen in person. Of course this figure right here is not from Titanfall, but if it was, the only other figures available would have been through Good Smile and 3-0. They were huge, they were awesome looking, but so was the price tag. This right here falls into a nice little scale range. As for the general gist of the size, I think it comes in at around 28 centimeters, but there it is side by side with a high grade Gundam, a master grade Gundam, as well as besides your standard sized figure, which is about 112 scale. This right here, according to the box, is 127th scale. This isn't the only figure that comes in the box. We also get this tiny little pilot figure as well. And for something that is so small, it is incredibly detailed. This thing looks fantastic. On top of that, it does feature full articulation, which I'll get to a little later on. But all in all, this right here is impressive. Pretty cool. The mecha does have a fully opening cockpit just like this. The top flips up, the front flips out, and you can stick the pilot figure in there, which is so damn savage. That's great. I guess the only thing I could mention about the pilot figure is on the box, and I'm going to assume in the promotional pictures, it was shown with short sleeves. This one right here has long sleeves. And honestly, for better or worse, I think it looks a lot better. The short sleeves look a little bit awkward. The way that the joints went through that doesn't look too natural. This right here looks a whole lot better. So moving on to the accessories, and like we saw earlier on, this thing comes fully loaded. We don't just have accessories for the mecha, we also have some accessories for the pilot figure, which is so cool. Let's take a look at the mecha first. First off in here, we've got two pairs of these armor plates. So there are a whole bunch of hard points around the figure. These seem to be four millimeter, I think. I assume these can be attached to either the thighs here or the upper arms. In the instructions, it just shows the upper arms. Next up, we've got these pair of subarms. These attach up here onto the shoulders for storage of the swords. Next up then, we've got this small one which attaches to the upper section of the mecha. This attaches to this launcher. And we've got three different points of articulation on this. Moving on to the weapons, and we have this, what seems to be an assault rifle or submachine gun. There are tabs on the handle of this for holding it in the hand, just like this. And when it's not in use, it can be attached onto the hip into one of these hard points using the peg on the side. And lastly then, what makes this the Jewel Blade Swordsman is these Jewel Blades. So that is what they look like once again, just like everything else in the box. 
that is in a gunmetal finished off with a wash for that weathered effect. Once again, these clip into the hands just like the long range weapon. And we have three different pegs on these for storage. So of course, these can be stored up here on those arms we saw earlier. So that is enough about this mecha. Let's move on to the minifigure and the accessories we get for it. For the most part, what we get in here is equipment, including a fully functioning helmet, which is awesome. That just slides on like so, looks great. We also have this utility belt to equip that. We just have to pull the figure in half like so, pop it on, stick it back together again. Next, we've got a bunch of little equipment pieces that can attach onto the little holes on the figure. What we've got is some pouches, a sidearm, this thing, whatever it is, as well as these little armor plates around the back of the arms. Personally, I recommend gluing these. These do hold down without glue, but they do feel like they're at risk of falling off. They're really small, and when you're posing it, they will definitely fall off. So if you want them on there, I recommend sticking them on there permanently. Lastly then, in here we've got a little assault rifle, which pops into the hands like this. And that is pretty much it for the accessories for the little guy. All in all, I think it's pretty damn cool that they included some accessories for the mini guy. They could have just had it with all of this stuff attached, left nothing optional. So this is a really nice extra. So now moving into the articulation and the general build of this guy, and all in all I can say it is a bit of a mixed bag. This thing did take a massive tumble off a shelf for me, and for the most part it did split open a bit in the chest, but it was really easy to put back together. For the most part it doesn't seem glued or anything like that, it just seems like it was clipped together, so that's pretty cool. On here we do have a mix between incredibly strong joints and some incredibly weak ones, so I'll talk about that while I go through it. So first off, we have a whole bunch of articulation up here for the weapons, so this thing moves forward and back. That's a bit of a ratchet joint there. We have this section up here, of course that is for that multi-launcher. That little head in there, that can move side to side. At the shoulder, this moves up and down, about parallel to the ground. This is a bit of a clicky ratchet joint, not too clicky. But however, as for this full spin all the way around, this ratchet joint is incredibly strong and terrifying. This feels like at any point it's going to break with the amount of force you put into it, but it never seems to, so that's good. And again, if it would break, I'd break it. Guaranteed. We have rotation up here at the upper arm, secondary rotation at this point. As for the bend at the elbow, there we go, so about 90 degrees or so. It does also extend around to the other side if you want. And at the wrist here we've got one of those rotating ball joints, so it can move up and down like this, as well as rotate. As for the hands, these are awesome. The thumb is on a ball joint there, so that can move in and out to hold the weapons. We have a bend right there, and of course that can rotate on the ball joint. Pretty cool. As for the fingers, they can move outwards like this. All of those include the middle finger. Every single joint on those fingers can move. That is fantastic. These are some incredibly, incredibly poseable hands. We have a killer waist joint on this thing right here. There is the front and back ab crunch. This will not leave you wanting, and the same goes for side to side. Incredible. Finally, we also have the full rotation at that point as well, so all in all, great joint. As for the waist joint, it's pretty much the same as what we saw up at the shoulder. So there's the rotation there. Again, this is one of those really clacky, clacky ratchet joints that is really strong, but again, feels so breakable. But again, it hasn't broke on me. Next up then, another ratchet joint right here. There's the kick all the way to the side, a little less than perpendicular to the ground. We've got that full rotation then at the upper thigh, and this is one of the looser joints on this figure. Sadly, this isn't directly accessible, so you can't really just open it up and tighten that up without potentially breaking it. So this is one of the joints that lets you down the most here. The knee has this little flappy flappy armor piece. We've got a double jointed knee on here, that is this top joint here which gives you about this much, and the bottom joint here which, which will bring it the rest of the way. That's a pretty nice bend at the knee there, and you can also kick that lower joint forward for that reverse joint look. That looks pretty cool. I will mention though that the top one, even though it does click securely between the positions it can be posed in, it is a little on the loose side within that position, so it does wiggle a little bit and can cause this to fall over at times. Next up then we have the ankle, which is just a ball and socket as you can see there, but you can get pretty much what you would want out of that. This is one of the joints I would recommend tightening by either top coating or adding something to the ball in order to make it a little more secure. Out of the box, especially on this guy right here, this one is a little bit too loose to hold it up some of the times. Makes it a bit of a fall risk. So I do recommend tightening up these ones. 
And the last thing we have on here then is the toes. They can bend upwards like so. And this is another one that right out of the box on this foot is a bit on the loose side. Again, a bit of a fall risk. This is a very, very, very simple design. It just slots in like so. So tightening that up will be no issue whatsoever. This one right here is fine. This one is actually quite stiff like that. So I guess it depends on the amount of paint that actually ended up hitting these joints, how tight or loose that they are. On the whole, the articulation on this is fantastic. The joint strength could be a little bit better down in the legs. Pretty simple fixes if you know what you're doing. And I'm sure something like this varies a lot between figure to figure. But just keep in mind that it may require a bit of a tightening up. All in all, pretty good though. So next up, let's blast through the articulation on the minifigure. The head there is just your standard ball joint, so you get that pivot side to side and down and up. There's that shoulder all the way up, full rotation, that bend right there at the elbow. There's also some spin in the elbow there, natural. Pretty nice wrist joint for something so small, we've got that up and down as well as rotation. By head. Not much for ab crunch, not much side to side either. And there is the rotation at that point. Kick up to the front, out to the back, splits, full spin kick. There we go with that bend at the knee. And the ankle there, exactly the same as the wrist. So up and down. If you want pivot, you need to turn that joint around and that can spin as well. For a figure so small, I have to admit, I'm impressed. So that right there is it for the review. That was Joy Toys Dark Source, Jewel Blade Swordsman, also known as the HZ Double Knife. I have to say, when I saw these on Facebook, I thought they looked really damn cool, but didn't know exactly what they would be like once you get them in your hands, once you've got them in person. And I have to say, this thing is awesome. It's big, it's badass, the minifigure is really cool. I love mecha that come with minifigures. On top of that, the articulation is fantastic, but it is let down a bit by the joint strength. The joints are really well designed, but some of them, especially in the legs, could be a little bit tighter. This is something you can sort out yourself, so it's not the biggest problem. The accessories are all pretty cool. The weathering and the paint on everything looks great. So all in all, I have to say, I really recommend these. These are so cool. As usual, if you do want some of your own, I have put a link down there in the description. Make sure to come back for more mecha reviews, and I'll see you next time.